Hey you guys, uh, I hope you're having a great day. I hope many of you went to church today. Um, if you didn't, I hope you watched a good service online and got the word of God from there. Um, today I have uh, quite a uh, different kind of task ahead of me. Um, as many of you know, I love music. I love music of all kinds, and I've and I've used music, both secular and Christian music, in my sermons for years um, to explain ex and express things. Um, and many of you may ask why I use music and why I use secular music. Um, um, it's simply because I believe that all kinds of music can be a ministry. Not, not every song is ministry, but if you listen carefully to some songs, uh, even secular songs, they could minister to you, and and they do, um, depending on the kind of person you are. Now, I'm not saying that every Christian should listen to secular music. It should be under their own discretion and what they feel though, um, in their spirit. I would never say that because everybody's different. But I will say. If you allow God to speak in different ways, he does. If you allow God to open your mind to the different ways he speaks, um, he does. And because I love different kind of music, sometimes, um, most times actually with me, the song will come and then the sermon will follow. Um, what? Last week I did, um, I did, a, um, a song on Champion by Carrie Underwood and Ludacris. I've, I had that song in my heart to do as a sermon for a, about, I think pretty close to a year now. And I was ruminating on how to do it, and I eventually put it up uh, next last week. Um, and it was it was just something that I had in my heart. Um, and sometimes God will use um, different different uh, songs to speak to me personally and ministerially about things to speak to you guys or um, things that I may be going through in my personal life that may help you guys and sometimes he, he doesn't use music at all sometimes he will just give me a word and and say to me tell them this but this task today is very unique in that I heard this song about, I guess, about four months ago. I was on my Spotify um, and I heard this song. And when I heard this song, it's a secular song by Alicia Cara. And when I heard this song, my sermonic mind went crazy. I was like, somebody needs to answer these girls, this girl's questions in this song. Like, basically, this song is about a girl uh, wondering about God and trying to figure things out. And whatever and just asking a bunch of questions that a lot of people are asking but they're afraid to bring forward because they're afraid to be judged by Christians and and I I 
but to be honest, I was like, if, if these two preachers were here, uh, uh, they could do um, a week. Uh, they could do a six-week sermon series on this song, and the Lord kept putting it on my heart and on my heart, and. He said today, forget about those two preachers that you love. Why don't you put up a video and attempt to ask or answer and delve into some of, some of um, these artists' questions about me? I said, Lord, I'm not learned. He said, I've called you. And I put it in your heart. I didn't put it in theirs for a reason. Do this, someone will be blessed by it. So I'm doing this. And what I'm going to do is basically read the lyrics because I can't play the song. And then after I read the lyrics, I will... Or maybe I'll go through the song line by line and then uh, I will stop and then I will explain and then move on and go through it that way. I think that would be easiest so I can take my time and go through the song and whatever. So while I do this, um, I'm going to, before I do this, I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Speak to me, speak through me, restore heart, restore souls. Cause me to give your answers to these questions. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so just let me get the song up. And the song is called Seven Days by Alicia Carr. And if you haven't heard the song, I will put a link both on Facebook and in the description box under my YouTube video uh, to this song so you can actually hear the song. But the lyrics are so powerful. I'm just going to go um, th through them stanza by stanza and try and pull out uh, what I think is so powerful about this song. It says, and this song again is called Seven Days by Alicia Carr. Um, and the song reads as this. It says, if there is, is a God, do you think he's looking down, curled up on the couch right now? As we, as we fail to figure out, out, as we fail to figure it out, does he turn down the sound? Is he proud? Are we proud? Guess, guess we forgot how to live life with no filter. Making born people famous. Let's pretend they're, fa let's pretend they're fascinating. Let's tell little girls they're pretty. That girls... Let's tell little girls that pretty girls are better. Or that pigment or religion really matters. Well, let me stop there and just say, yes, God, God is paying attention to the world. 
He knows what's going on in the world. He's not pacing heaven. Uh, he's he's not um, he's not curled up on some couch in heaven right now, wondering what to do. He's not watching it like a show. He takes the world very seriously. Um, and how I know this is basically uh, Psalms 121.4, which says, let me get it up here. Does it get the exact wording? Behold, he keepeth is, this is from the King James Version. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither, slum, neither slumbers nor sleeps. And that Psalms 121 verse 4. And yeah, we sometimes think because the world is so topsy-turvy and because there's so much going on that God must be asleep somewhere. He must not care about us. And I just want to say to you, not only he, does he care about you, but he is intimately involved in, in the affairs of people. And he wants to be intimately involved in your life so no he's not on the couch somewhere curled up watching like this is some kind of show for him this is a very serious uh thing for god he is he is on the ball he is not concerned he is not concerned he is not perturbed he's not worried he has a divine plan for for each and every aspect of the world. And, and sometimes it is hard to see his divine plan when we, um, when we, when we try and uh, define it, we say, where are we God? Because the problem with, the problem with us is, we like to know the end from the beginning, but he often doesn't tell us the end from the beginning. So that's why all these questions uh, come about, because um, we we just see all the calamity and everything going on in the world, and we're like, where is God? Is he sleeping? So valid question, and my answer to that would be absolutely not he's not sleeping he's fully awake he doesn't sleep he's fully involved and he knows and he may not stop things but he is aware of them he is involved in them and he has a divine plan for the pieces of the puzzle uh, that he uh, created. It's a puzzle to us, but not to him. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what the t what the time is is to do it. And sometimes, because things are so bad, we don't understand why. But we we've just got to trust that God knows everything. And I forgot to answer her first question. She said, if there is a God, and I can tell you from my experience and what I have known that yes, there is a God and he's real and he's involved and he created the world in seven days. So, so I answered her first two questions that yes, there is a God, and yes, he, it, and no, he's not sleeping curled up on a couch in heaven somewhere. 
he is fully involved, fully aware, and fully engaged in the lives of humans. Um, and like he, she talks here in the first stanza. Um, he, oh, she she talks um, here about um, uh, is he proud? Um, and, he, and she said, are we proud? And I would say, um, he is proud of his creation. Um, all the things he created in nature. Um, but I think although he's, he delights in his people um i think that some of the decisions we make not that he's disappointed but he just wishes that we would have made other choices not that he can't take all of our decisions and turn them around for good not that he is working on it but I think sometimes when we go our own way, he just wants, um, he just wants us to be aware and understand that although this too is working out for our, our good, it may take a road to get there. And not that he is ever disappointed in you, he loves you, he's for you, but like a good father, when we make mistakes or follow our own will, he's, so, he's sorry for the, the uh, consequences of our actions. Like he said, um, my pastor said something awesome today. He said, you can make any choice, but be aware that once you make the choice, you have to deal with the consequences. Not, not exactly like that, but he said something like that. And I think that it's so awesome. So it's not like he's not proud of us. Um, he's just, he just, he's just, I believe, sad sometimes because um, the choices that we make for ourselves take us on roads that we don't have to go on. And even when they do, good news is he's working it all up for our good. And, it's, and it ultimately comes as part of his plan. So it all, it all works out for the best anyhow. So, I uh, uh, that's my answer for those uh, two questions. Um, um, and she talks a bit in this first stanza about social media and the cutting and the um. Oh, not in this first stanza. Um, she talks a, a bit about um, beauty and our perception of it. And we tell certain girls that they're beautiful. And we have a certain standard of beauty. And um, uh, he, she said... Um, but in, in the word, it said in Psalms 139, he's, um, he said, um, David called himself, I, I, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. 
So, despite what the world may say, who is better looking, who is uh, um, not so good looking, look, you have to look at what your creator says about you and how he created you. And he created you beautiful. He says, um, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says, I've known you from the womb. I knit you together. I know every hair on your head. And it's beautiful. And it is just awesome. So when you are comparing yourself to people, oh, she's more beautiful than me, or he's more handsome than me, she has bigger breasts than me. He has a bigger, you know. You know what I mean. Um, you just have to learn to define yourself by God and his word. And know that his word will always back you up. And his standard is the standard that the world needs to live needs to follow because his standard is the only standard that will stand um and um and then in the second stanza In the second stanza, um, oh, and at the very end of the first stanza, she uses very interesting wording. She says, at least the bubble we created will make for some good TV. It, it seems that we've created, um, a bubble in the Western world where we don't we go about our daily lives and go about our um, little little lives and families and work and school and home and our task of daily living and we don't really step outside of our bubble to see what's going on in the world and what's happening in the world. The only time we care about what's going on in the world and even sometimes our neighbors is when tra tragedy strikes. So uh, when, when a massive tragedy strikes, you'll see a lot of people donating like Red Cross, Samaritan's Purse and all of that. But it needs to be all the time where we're looking out for our neighbors, where, where we are our brother's keepers. We shouldn't, have to, we shouldn't have to wait for a tragedy to let that be what's happening. And he... And then he, um, she talks about, um, um, she said, she said, oh, Mr. Man upstairs, um, she talks about cutting and pasting and social media again and and she but at the end of this second second stanza she said uh the spectacle of cut and paste uh that we have made uh would you say please say it was worth the seven days and I I just 
when I read that, I thought my first question was, Lord, she's right in a way. Was all this drama, all this thing that's going on in the world worth you you creating such such a world and he said yes I did it because of love yes it was worth it yes it's all going to be worth it because it's going to all show forth my glory she said he said all what you see all the groaning that you hear in the world is going to be worth my glory and he said I'm going to get glory out of this. So he said to me, yes, it was worth it. Yes, the cross was worth it. Yes, things were worth it. Um, and I'm, I'm going to pause this right now and refresh myself and then I'll come back and continue. Um, so I... When you watch this video, it'll be all put together. It won't be a break, but for the sake of this, I'm pausing it now just for, uh, to refresh myself for a minute, for about half an hour or so, or, or I'll come, and I'll come back. But when I actually do the video, it will just continue. So, but in real life, I will um, be refreshing myself and uh, coming back in about, uh, I will begin recording at about, I guess, oh, later on in the evening. So when you see this, it won't matter because it will be one long video, but for now, I'm stuck. I'm pausing the recording and coming back later. Thanks. Take care. Not not take care because I'm coming back, but I'm not done yet. I will see you later.